morning welcome back to the channel everybody and a huge shout out to chris thank you very much for sending that cat food to my mailbox for penny she's very happy to have a variety from the usual seafood stuff she's been eating that wellness brand seems to be doing her good it was very kind of you and thoughtful to send it chris i hope you're watching this video <laughs> i also got in the mail yesterday it looks like to be a retractable clothesline but i don't know who it's from there was no from tag in the box i haven't opened it yet let's see what this looks like oh yeah oh damn oh it's one of those okay so it's the whole doody boop instead of flutey doo somebody was watching my video where i said i was going to string one across so in the back there for my uh for my towel when i get back from the pool i don't know who you are but thank you very much that's a Maybe we get to installing that later today. That may force me to redo that entire back area. I've been using hanging nets for some clothing for, for a while now, but um, the nets have stretched a bit. I guess I just got some heavy ginch. <laughs> and so it might be nice to sort of free that up and then install this there, but we will see. There's not really any place on the opposite side to put the... This could be a project. We may not get to it today. I am wearing a bright orange shirt and it is cold as balls. This is actually a UV shirt from Dixon. It's supposed to be worn in the summer and whatnot. It is laundry day for sure. I mentioned it before, but reducing the amount of clothes that you have in your tiny home increases the frequency that you have to do laundry. At least when you're a dirty, dirty boy like I am. We are still quite a few days out from my surgery date. Um, it's Thursday today, which means I get to re-up my milk from a Dutchman dairy, which will be nice. And I'm gonna have my little girl overnight tonight and tomorrow. So I opted for a hotel tonight and over at my cousin's for a sleepover with her uh, tomorrow night. And we've got a place that we're gonna rip out to on Saturday. And I'm still, I'm doing my best to film a bunch of content to sort of get ahead of the ball before that surgery date. So I have plenty of stuff to edit and plenty of content to put out on the channel for you lovely people. So I will have to make sure that our travel bag is good and ready to go. It's, I mean, that's kind of defeating the purpose of that bag being there. It's always supposed to be ready to go, but there's been a lot going on to say the least. It's actually kind of nice cool and interesting that I am I'm gonna have my kiddo for these next couple days I could have just arranged that with her mother on my own whim but back when these two nights were planned I still didn't know when my surgery date was going to be and um, her mom's going to some concerts or something and she had asked if I would mind taking a little nugget to which I said of course not absolutely not um, and then of course I got my surgery date and it's just it's interesting. So it's to me, it's almost like the universe working in mysterious ways saying, Hey, you're going under the knife soon. Why don't we just give you these days with your, with your kiddo, which I know is so it's, it's so silly and so little, but it's, it's sort of fun and comforting to look at things that way. Um, I hope it doesn't mean that I'm going to be out of commission for a very long time after my surgery, but one never knows. Oh, we got a lot of stuff in here snackies and all that i just i just want the coffee pod no don't fall out nobody has time for that the way my schedule is looking i will have her tonight tomorrow a little bit on saturday i'll actually take her back to her mom's because i've got stuff to do on saturday night and then i will also pick her up sunday so i can have our regularly scheduled daddy daughter day monday will be as normal day as it can be i've got my appointment at the doctor for the physical that was a requirement before the surgery that night i'll pick her up from school as per usual but then after i drop her off at her mom's it's basically hunker down get some sleep and then hitting the road with my friend amber uh, on tuesday morning so that i am up in edmonton and available um when they say, all right, it's time for surgery. Cause they said that they would call me the day before the surgery to let me know the time I need to be at the hospital. Let's say for lack of a better word, which is a little weird when I actually say it out loud and think of it that way, but that's apparently just how many people are getting uh, the old slice and dice.
That's the second time I've done that this week. Patreon knows. Yikes. I'm feeling it so full of water. Matthew, you don't even use that much for one cup of coffee. Yikes. So, all in all, a bit of a busier day today than yesterday for sure, although yesterday was much needed for myself just to take some time and process and be creative and just, you yeah, know, get my head back on straight. Reorient sort of thing. Reset is a word I use frequently in my life. And there's nothing wrong with that. Those days are absolutely important. If you didn't see that video, it's here on the channel. It was literally the last video before this one. If you're not subscribed, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. I would sure appreciate it. All right, I'm gonna make myself some coffee. Like a cowboy, if, if, if a cowboy had a coffee press from Amazon, and then we will get on with the rest of our day. Right before I get to the market to pick up a new bottle of nice, clean tasting milk, I'm gonna rip in here to the registrations office because my driver's license is about to expire. Expires on my birthday every year. I think that's the same for everybody, isn't it? And uh, for the last few years, I've just been re-upping it every year. So every year I have to come here and, and redo that. Normally you do five, because it's actually cheaper. And uh, it's nice because I'm finally in a comfortable enough position financially to be able to do that. So I'm going to check that off the old box on the list of things to do because I'm going to be in Edmonton waking up from surgery, God willing. But I don't need to be worrying about shit expiring then. So let's go re it up, re it up, <clears throat> re up the driver's license. Hey, you, you hold down a Ford, okay? I'll be right back. And yeah, I'll be right back. Boop. Actually, did I lock this bad boy? Oh, I did. I'm so smart. Never mind. SMRT. I am so smart. Done and done. Got the temporary one, super legal, <laughs> for two weeks. Let's go get some milk. Had to get a new picture taken as well. That's always fun, especially when you're prepared. Mm. Oh well. For those interested, renewing your driver's license for five years in the province of Alberta, $93. But every five years, not so bad, I think. To do one year, it's like, it's $25, $26 or something like that, I don't know. Got her bike helmet on the road. It's ill advised. <clears throat> now let's get some tasty milk. Maybe she's taking like moped lessons. Oh, that's not a moped. That looked like a tiny zoom zoom bike. That was actually probably the best time of day to go to a registration office because usually I would go in the evening, right? And that's when everybody's going. And you can sometimes wait for half an hour, 45 minutes. Like they're usually pretty good at that location. Uh, but I still had to wait there. Eh, I say six minutes and 37 seconds. I don't know. It was a short wait, not too shabby at all. Big stuff. Yikes. I should probably also take Lucky to a car wash today, maybe. She hasn't been in one in a while, feels like. It's not that she's like excessively dirty, but we're just gonna gather a bunch of bugs on the highway on the way up to Edmonton. Probably not. It's it's fall. There's not nearly as many bugs out there making my life miserable, which is always greatly appreciated. 
Thank you, seasonal changes. It's also gotten warm enough now that I don't need this layering situation with the flannel and the long sleeve orange UV shirt. Get your boot bottle. Ha ha. Hello, tiny home on wheels. Lovely to see you again. All right. Huh. <laughs> All right. Ugh, got a whole bag of stuff. Ooh, I can feel it got warm in here. You put those window blockers up, I tell you. Warms up real fast. And then your fat cat ends up trying to cool herself off on the bed in a very ladylike fashion. Hey, Penny, you trying to cool off in here? Don't worry, it got a little warm, eh? Even for this time of year. I know. No. You know what? We will open up the fan. So we get some fresh air in here now. Oh, it is open. I just had the cover on. In. Cool air. Anyway, I'm digging this market. I found a whole other section on the floor where there's a whole other sort of grocery style area, like grocery shopping. And um, I was able to find, well, first of all, of course, and of course, so it piles into the fridge. But then I also found at that new location, new location, new to me, they got some dehydrated fruit, got some bananas and strawberries. And honestly, I know I haven't lived, but I've never seen chunks of banana dehydrated. I've seen banana chips in the grocery stores and I love those. Thought those would be fun. As well as some dehydrated mango slices. I don't really like mango, but those look like candy and we'll give them a shot. And I don't think Brooklyn has ever, I mean, I've never given her dehydrated fruit. So I'm curious to see how she sort of like takes to it. I also found this tiny, cute, delicious looking little loaf of sourdough, cheese and herb sourdough. Now I need to find my serrated knife. Nobody send me a serrated knife. I'm gonna to wanna to eat this bread before any knife you could send could possibly come in the mail. I will I will either find mine or I will purchase another one. I also saw this and I was like, hmm, I really wanna get a can of Coke and compare it because it's like cola, it's local, it's brewed in here in Calgary from New Level Brewing. I've actually had a couple of their beers, um, so I wanted to see how their Coke tastes, but it's not cold. So we'll have to get that in the fridge and then we will see. And they got a bag of these chips. These are so good. I got the Dijon Ranch flavored. These tortilla chips are tasty AF. And that is all she wrote. I do need to go do some more grocery shopping later. Seems like Thursday's become my day to do grocery shopping, which is fine. It's always good to have organization. Like I said, I'm gonna have my little girl overnight uh, at my cousin's tomorrow, and we're gonna probably use the barbecue and make burgers. The burgers in there, um, they only come in packs of four and they're very expensive. And there'll probably be more people than that there. So we will get some at the grocery store, along with some of uh, our favorite yogurt. So for now, I'm gonna get all of this stuff organized and get it into the refrigerator. The room in here, yes we do. We still got some eggies left over from last week too from this market. Tasty, tasty. Goes in here. Anything else needs to go in here? Oh, the Coke. Oh nice, but everything else is like, stay out on the counter kind of food. Perfect. I do, I, I can't wait. I need to try one of those banana chunks. I'm about to go for breakfast with my friend, but I just, this just, it caught my eye. And I was like, you must be mine. So let's see. Like actually, when you buy them by the, yourself in the store there, the packaging says banana marshmallows. Tastes nothing like a marshmallow. It tastes like a dried banana. Found one single sock kicking around in Lucky. Get that in the laundry bag. And yeah, after breakfast, we're gonna have to find a place to deal with this. For now, tally freaking ho. Let's go.
darn it, left my glasses back here on the counter. All right, hold on to your butt, Penny. Right. And you get three guesses where I'm going for breakfast. Then the first two do not count. Don't forget your seatbelt. Don't hit the curb. Bad day for everybody involved. Yeah, it's a little bit of a better spot, eh, Penny? Not in the direct sunlight. What do you think? Much better, thank you. Hey, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting all sorts of cocky again. Jumping into my van like that, into my seat, and moving around too much, maybe too frequently. Time to get the TENS machine back on my back before I go into Benny's for breakfast, because Starting to feel a little bit of a pain in the ass back there. No, that's not the ass. Everybody just calm down. One electrode. Two electrode. Excellent. Shake my ass while I go get something to eat. Perfect. Just waiting for my friend to get here. These little dehydrated mango are delicious. Get it in you. Nice Wrangler. Except it's color match, so meh. <laughs> but I always have to rearrange the table when I come in. My apologies to the owner. The heater is still on. That's why it's so hot in here. I forgot to turn the diesel heater off when we left. I guess that answers the question of whether or not you can drive while your diesel heater's on. Breakfast was delicious, but I'll be right back. I don't have my remote for my diesel heater either. Yeah, that explains it. You're still back there, Penny, enjoying the heat. Unbelievable, you and your fur coats. All right, there we go. Now, off to the laundromat. I'm actually gonna go to a laundromat that I scoped. I didn't scope it, I've never even been there. That I saw forever ago, all over by the old shop where I used to work. Um, and the reason I'm gonna go there is twofold. I am a little closer to it right now. And the one that I've been going to, that I've shown here on the vlog, it's fine, like you get your clothes washed, but the owners at that location are, are really, I don't wanna say pushy, because they're very nice, but they're very move it the F along, so much so that if you're like a couple minutes late coming back to get your load, they take it out for you and like put it on top of the machine or they'll throw it into a dryer, which I guess is a nice convenience in, in one way. In the other way, keep your hands off my ginch. It's just a little tilted. Also, how do you know you still have too much stuff in your tiny home? Water station door flies open in transit. Something in there knocked it out. Maybe I just didn't latch it. The latch doesn't look latched. Hmm. I need the world's greatest detective to solve that mystery. May as well wash this too. 
Hold on to that for me, will you, Penny? I gotta grab my laundry sheets. Detergent sheets. Whatever. Oh, it's gonna fall out. Penny, I said, hold on to it. <laughs> hold on to those. Then. There we go. Okay, right. we'll check this place out. See what's what. See if they rush me along. I'm actually gonna use the fabric softener sheets this time. I don't know why I didn't think to do that the last time I did this. Huh. Guess if I get bored, I could go next door and look at some lizards. Well, I like it better already. The lady in there working, she's very professional, just gave me my change and is doing her own thing. It's a laundromat that reminds me a lot of the one from the episode of Friends, where Ross had to show Rachel how to do her own laundry and everything. Um, you got the whole little baskets with the wheels that you can move stuff around on in and whatnot. The washing machine I chose does not have a timer. Uh, the dryers look like they do. $4 for a wash. I'm gonna assume about 23 minutes, that's what the other laundromat is. So set a timer. Then we'll run back in and, and check her out. Well, I'll just do it because it's it's laundry. Quality content. Quality content. One thing I will need when I go back in there is my dryer ball. Hello, my dear. So fuzzy. In the meantime, I got the fans going, giving me some nice circulation in here. We're gonna get out the uh, overnight bag here and make sure we have everything we need for myself Oy. and the little girl, including backup hair clips. You can never have too many. I haven't been in this bag in a while. First shirt I see on top is the one that Rocio sent me with Stella's face on it. Sarah Rose gave this to me at the, uh, the Patreon meetup. Rocio got it for me and because they ghosted me in BC. Yeah, you did. Rocio had to give it to Sarah Rose to pass on to me. Well, you know what? I guess it's meant to be. That's what we're wearing tomorrow, even though it's going to be a lot cooler tomorrow. <laughs> this is the go bag. Let's do some inventory. All right, get a little bit more seasonally appropriate here, minus the Hawaiian shirt that I'm going to wear tomorrow. Got her shorts out of here. The weather's way too cool now. Added up two pairs of pants just in case. Got everything else we need, minus my computer that will have to go in last because once I put that laundry on to dry, I'm gonna probably wanna do some editing. So other than that, the go bag is good to go. You gotta be kidding me. I was just finishing up a few things. Look up here. Darn it! Well, future Matthew problem. And actually, as much as I said that the bag was ready to go, I forgot one of the most important things. Come back here, reach back here. Oh. And we got our bedtime story. But I bought her two books the last time we went to the bookstore, so I'm wondering, she's got a little travel suitcase that she carries. It's got her like toys in it as well. I bet you the other book is in there. And I meant this one to be the exclusive one to remain in Lucky. Eh, we'll read this one tonight. It's fine. That's what I've always done with my little girl. Well, actually, I haven't always read her books because when she was younger, she wasn't really into books. But since she was a, a newborn, anytime I was putting her down for her nap or for bedtime, um, I always recited the poem, The Cremation of Sam McGee by Robert Service to her. And now we're at a point where it's just... I know it by heart. She's starting to memorize it. She can say a few lines. She asks me for the poem or the cremation, as we've come to call it. 
and it is our uh, it is our bedtime ritual for sure. So it's you now that she's into storybooks. She usually asks me to read her a story, and then asks for the poem to to sort of zonk out to. So that's uh, that's where we're at now. So bath time, storybook, the cremation of Sam McGee. All right. I already put them in the. Uh, I already put my laundry in the dryer. The wash cycle a little bit longer than 23 minutes because I got all the way back to the van, then started it for 23 minutes. When my timer went off, I went in. It was still tumbling. So good to know for future reference. And the doors on the washing machines are uh, very secure. I had to give it the old heave ho and ask what looked like someone who had been here multiple times before if there was any sort of trick to it. And it's a, no, the trick's just elbow grease. And I was just doing some editing in the back of Lucky. But now once we get this, we'll get them all folded up and I gotta go stop at the grocery store. I realized I'm actually ahead. I'll have all day tomorrow to get the groceries for tomorrow night's dinner over at Lindsay's, but I'm still gonna need a couple staples for uh, tonight with the little girl. All right, everything folded and ready to go. I got the one rogue sock that was separated from its brethren in my hand. But yeah, that place, it's a big old pass in my book down here. Um, way more laid back, way more easy going, no, no stress. Uh, obviously it's middle of the week. <laughs> it might be a little bit busier on like the weekends or in the evenings or whatever, but doing this laundry made me realize, man, have I been in flip-flop mode? I just did the go bag. I got zero pairs of socks in there for myself. But I got a lot of clean ones now to add to it. So I'm gonna do that. Then we will pick up those staples. T-shirts, socks, and underwear. Dixon's in my hands here. Fly. One rogue sock. Ugh. Flannels up here. There's only two flannels in that load of laundry. That must be a record. Bamboos in the party shirts. That's too shabby. I feel we need like a collapsible basket or something that would make bringing the folded clothes back out to the tiny home on wheels a lot easier. Two pairs of socks for the go bag. And everything else go in your hanging basket because we're definitely not getting to that project today. The day is waning on and we are running out of usable daylight. Dryer ball. Socks. Oh yeah. Swim trunks. We'll need those for Sunday maybe. Done. Done. Alright. Blueberries and yogurts, and we are good to go. I just like to have a few staples in the room with us. I've also got juice, water, some like uh, chips, like those pop, doesn't matter. Snackies! Because we'll go out for dinner tonight like we usually do on Thursdays. Then the hotel has a breakfast in the morning, and uh, she'll be in school slash daycare tomorrow, and then dinner over at Lindsay's. And I'll have to do the shopping for that tomorrow, because today they say I'm done. And now it's just a matter of killing time before I can... Did that start? It did. They did. You ruined me, Lucky. I just don't know anymore. Uh, yeah, kill time before I can get checked in at the hotel. Then go pick up the little pirate princess. All right, and pleasant surprise. I thought I was checking at four. It's actually checking at three. So I'm here now. Let's uh, let's get the bags in there so it's a little less to worry about. I like to get checked in before I pick her up. It just makes things a little bit smoother. I'm not having to chase a little drunken monkey around a lobby whilst also trying to sign my name. Not ideal. So pro tip, go early. I'm sorry, Penny. You can't come into the hotel this time. This one doesn't allow pets. No. But that's okay though, that's okay. Because I built you your very own tiny home on wheels that is vastly larger and far superior in comfort than the little tiny glass boxes at the Humane Society. All right. <laughs> yeah. That'll do.
Sad day. No bathtub. Don't need a bubble bath then. It's another one of those funny little peculiar things to think of when you're living the van life and you have a little a little kiddo, right? Um, when we first started staying in hotels, of course, to me, it felt a little bit weird. Uh, it was raised very traditional, so the whole idea of raising a kid while doing the van life was new and unexplored territory for me. Not a lot of information out there regarding it. You just kind of have to learn as you go. But the fun part of it is it now is that we've done this so frequently and so often. It's just when it's me and her and we stay in a hotel, it's just it's just part of our life and it's just our normal. And that is actually really kind of cool. And I'm glad that it is the way it is. Another thing that's nice uh, because, you know, van life and the nomadic lifestyle is very fly by the, can be very fly by the seat of your pants, or it can be very organized. There are little routines here and there. And as much as I want to instill in my little girl the importance of not becoming, you know, I don't want to sound in, insensitive or insult anybody, but become like, a, a, a mainstream zombie sort of person, just day in, day out, baloney. I don't want her to do that with her life. So I'm hoping just like by the example I set, she uh, sees that there's options out there. All of that being said, we absolutely do have a routine. She's still so young. And that routine is very, it's very near and dear to my heart. Like I said, it's like, we'll come back here, we'll hang out for a while, maybe use some of her toys, her coloring books, maybe watch some of her cartoons. And then it'll be, well, shower time, right? And wind down time and story time and then poem time. And then uh, after she sort of zonks out, I'll make sure to keep the lights as low as possible. I'll plug in my headphones on my computer, do some editing. If I wasn't in such a, a crunch to get content out that I put myself in, uh, and I pull out the switch and just uh, do that for a, a little bit until I inevitably zonk out myself. Then I'll have to get a shower in there as well after she goes to sleep and do something about the, uh, the scruffiness that has become my face. But it is a nice little sort of break even from the van life. And I think it's important to make sure you do that um, consistently and, well, on the odd occasion. Uh, I think it's a healthy thing to do. So I'm out of here. I'm going to go get my daughter. That's still a, still a weird word for me to say. <laughs> oh, at the hotel. Where should we go for dinner? Um, um, IHOP. You want to go to IHOP for dinner? Yeah. What are you going to have there? Pancakes. Pancakes? Yeah. What kind of pancakes? Red. Red pancakes? What are red pancakes made out of? Don't kick Lucky. She doesn't like that. What are red pancakes made out of? Yeah. You don't know? Should we get a whole bunch and eat them and find out? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you press the button. You gotta press the up one. one. Nope. There you go. Oh, harder. Make it light up. There you go. I don't know, are you tall enough to get the key in there? Let's see, you gotta put it in the slot. Other way. Here, let's try it like this. Try to put it in there. Put it in and pull it out. You did it! Good job! There are strange things done in the midnight sun By the men who moil for gold The Arctic trails have their secret tales That would make your blood run cold Northern lights have seen queer sights But the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake Labarge when I cremated Sam McGee. Now Sam McGee was from Tennessee where the cotton blooms and blows while he left his home in the south to roam round the pole God only knows. He was always cold but that land of gold seemed to hold him like a spell though he'd often say in his homely way that he'd sooner live in hell on a christmas day we were mushing our way over the dawson trail 
Talk of your cold through the parka's fold and stabbed like a driven nail. If our eyes we'd close, then the lashes froze till sometimes we couldn't see. It wasn't much fun, but the only one to whimper was Sam McGee. And that very night, as we lay packed tight in our robes beneath the snow, and the dogs were fed and the stars overhead were dancing heel and toe. He turned to me and Cap says he, I'll cash in this trip, I guess. And if I do, I'm asking that you won't refuse my last request. Well, he seemed so low that I couldn't say no. Then he says with a sort of moan, it's the cursed cold and it's got right hold till I'm chilled clean through to the bone. Yet taint being dead, it's my awful dread of the icy grave that pains. So I want you to swear that foul or fair, you'll cremate my last remains. Now a man's last need is a thing to heed, so I swore I would not fail. And we started on at the break of dawn, but God, he looked ghastly pale. He crouched in the sleigh and he raved all day of his home in Tennessee. And before nightfall, a corpse was all that was left of Sam McGee. There wasn't a breath in that land of death, and I hurried, horror-driven, with a corpse half hid that I couldn't get rid because of a promise given. It was lashed to the sleigh, and it seemed to say, you may tax your brawn and brain, but you promise true, and it's up to you to cremate those last remains. Now a promise made is a debt unpaid, and the trail has its own stern code. In the days to come, though my lips were numb, in my heart how I cursed that load. And every night, by the lone firelight, while the huskies, round in a ring, howled up their woes to the hopeless snows, oh God, how I loathed the thing. And every day that quiet clay seemed to heavy and heavier grow. And on I went, though the dogs were spent and the grub was getting low. The trail was bad and I felt half mad, but I swore I would not give in. And I'd often sing to the hateful thing and it hearkened with a grin. Till I came to the marge of Lake LaBarge and a derelict there lay. It was jammed in the ice, but I saw on a thrice was called the Alice May. And I looked at it, and I thought a bit, and I looked at my frozen chum. Then here, said I, with a sudden cry, is my crematorium. Some planks I tore from the cabin floor, and I lit the boiler fire. Some coal I found that had been lying around, and I heaped the fuel higher. The flames soared and the furnace roared, such a blaze you seldom see. And I buried a hole in the glowing coal, and I stuffed in Sam McGee. Then I made a hike, for I didn't like to hear him sizzle so. And the heavens scowled and the huskies howled and the wind began to blow. It was icy cold, but the hot sweat rolled down my cheeks and I don't know why. And the greasy smoke in an inky cloak went streaking down the sky. I do not know how long in the snow I wrestled with grisly fear. But the stars came out and they danced about ere again I ventured near. I was sick with dread, but I bravely said, I'll just take a peep inside. I guess he's cooked, and it's time I looked. Then the door I opened wide. 
And there sat Sam, looking cool and calm in the heart of the furnace roar. And he wore a smile you could see a mile, and he said, Please shut the door. It's fine in here, but I greatly fear you let in the cold and storm since I left Plum Tree down in Tennessee. It's the first time I've been warm. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The Northern Lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake Labarge when I cremated Sam McGee.